there is a bit of confusion out there about digital wireless technology, and we need to distinguish between analog and digital audio and analog and digital wireless. They are two separate things, and we quite often connect digital wireless systems to a console using analog audio signals like I'm doing here. But when we talk about digital wireless, we are really referring to the way we modulate a radio wave. First, in this video, we discuss modulation, which encodes audio information in a radio wave. Then, we see some benefits of digital wireless, including less interference and higher density. And we also look at the biggest drawback of digital wireless, latency. Modulation is like embedding an audio wave into a radio wave. If we broadcast a radio wave at a specific frequency, which we call a carrier wave, we can use an audio signal to modulate this wave in a way that both the transmitter and receiver understand. Then the receiver can interpret that embedded information and convert it back into an audio signal. Now both analog and digital wireless work this way. And analog systems use the constantly varying nature of an audio signal to modulate the radio wave. However, digital systems first use an A to D converter to turn the audio signal into ones and zeros. Then they modulate the radio wave in a binary way by switching back and forth between two values, or sometimes more in some modulation schemes. Now with both analog and digital, we are still using the carrier wave to transmit audio information. It's just how we modulate that wave that changes. Additionally, both analog and digital wireless systems use compression schemes to operate efficiently. Analog wireless systems use a compander to compress the audio signal before transmission. And digital wireless systems use a codec, similarly to how we compress audio information into an MP3. As far as which one sounds better, that really just depends on the quality of the system. There are both analog and digital systems that sound fantastic, and we definitely use both all the way at the highest levels of live music production. Like this Sennheiser 6000, which is digital, sounds really great, and we do a complete overview of this system in the next section. But there are a lot of options for more inexpensive systems, both analog and digital, even though you do pretty much get what you pay for. Lower priced systems won't have as much clarity and are usually more prone to dropouts, but obviously we don't all have the budget for a system like this one. I mean, this one is on loan to me from Sennheiser, but the good news is that a lot of the technology is getting better and better, and both Sennheiser and Shure, who are really the industry leaders in wireless technology, have great products at a wide range of price points. But regardless of cost, digital wireless does have some clear advantages over analog. First of all, digital is just less prone to interference. It can actually take some RF hits and not actually hear it when an analog system would sound like static. Also, like we've been talking about with our shrinking RF bandwidth, we have to put more channels in less wireless space or increase our density. And that is something digital systems can do better than analog. And you can really see where the technology is headed if you consider how advanced systems like the Digital 6000 pull this off. First, like we discussed, the circuitry is designed to be intermodulation free, which is pretty amazing. So we don't have to worry about avoiding certain intervals between frequencies. Plus you can enable something called link density mode, which transmits at a lower power and less bandwidth to fit even more channels into any frequency range. But even though there are clear advantages to digital, there is one main issue, which is latency. Latency is the time it takes for a signal to pass through a digital circuit. Every digital audio device has some latency, including digital mixing consoles. And if I'm speaking into a wireless mic and it's getting fed back into my in-ears, it's going to start sounding really weird if the latency gets too long. And when we're calculating latency, we really have to think about the entire signal chain. For example, Say our digital wireless mic has three milliseconds of latency and the mixing console has 0.7 milliseconds, we'll say one millisecond, and it's sent back through an analog wireless system to my in-ears, which since it's analog is zero latency. So we have about four milliseconds altogether, which is totally acceptable in most situations. Now there are different opinions as to when you can actually start to hear latency, but 
Some professional monitor engineers I've asked have told me they try to stay under about five milliseconds. And some people say up to about seven milliseconds is okay, but opinions do vary. And if you're singing, you definitely do want to hear it back in your in-ears as quickly as possible. Now, there are some performers who insist on analog systems for this very reason. And in general, avoiding extra DSP, digital signal processing for things like plugins can help keep latency low. Of course, the better the technology gets, the lower the latency gets, so this will inevitably be less of an issue in future generations of wireless equipment. In this video, we discussed modulation, which embeds audio information in a radio wave. Then we looked at some benefits of digital wireless, including less interference and higher density, and talked about the biggest drawback with digital wireless, which is latency.